I started working for my grandfather when I was eight years old. By that time, he had already been a high school geometry teacher, a manager at 3M Company there in Chattanooga, dabbled in local politics, and finally was retired. But he decided that he wouldn't just sit in a rocking chair, he wanted to do something else. He had to get out and be involved with people. So he sold produce off the back of a pickup truck for one dollar a day. I got to sling all these heavy boxes of produce around and put things together and even make a few cells. And I got to, oh, the first year or so I was in high school before I had a driver's license. And he said, you know, I have this real nice field down here. Maybe you could put out some tomato plants and not just sell those. Oh, okay. <coughs> 500 tomato plants. <laughs> That's a lot of work. I stuck every, well, I planted them, I stuck them, I tied them three times, put seven dust on them, which I don't think you can do anymore, and weeded them, and the crop came in, they were beautiful. I went to my grandfather, I said, well, the crop's in, you know, are you ready for me? He said, no, nah, I changed my mind. <laughs> Whoa. Boy, I learned a lesson. And that story came to me thinking about this really bizarre reading from Genesis. Do you think that's kind of odd, the reading in Genesis? Did you? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's contract law in the ancient Near East. That's how you cut the deal in the ancient Near East. Get the heifer, you get the goat, you get the ram, you cut them in half, you lay them out, and the idea was, okay, here's the deal. I'm going to do this, this, and this, and you're either going to pay me this or you're going to barter this, this, and this, and as a sign of this deal, we're going to walk between these animals, cloven halves of animals. You know why? Well, if I renege on my deal, may what happened uh, to these animals happen to me. Ah. Gee, maybe I should have done that with my grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> Not clothing in half, do the deal thing. Uh, because that was a hard lesson to learn. And what I learned was no matter how close a human being may be to you, for whatever reason, they can let you down. But the grace this morning, the gospel this morning, as it were, is from this first reading in Genesis. Now you notice that in this reading, God's making all these promises to Abram. I'm going to give you this land. You're going to have all these wonderful descendants. You're going to be a great nation. You might not have your own child now, but that's coming. And all Abram has to do is say, I trust you. Okay, I believe you. That'll happen. And they get to the contract, and Abram's in a huge trance, and only one entity walks among those animals. God. God says, I'll put myself at risk for you. May this happen to me if my love, my steadfast love, deserts you and leaves you alone. There's grace there. No matter where we are in our lives, what we have experienced, the, the heights of joy, the deer of sorrow, God's promise, because we are all heirs of that promise. We are all children of Abraham. God's promise is to be with us. The beloved embrace is always there. And there's only one thing that we have to do in this deal. I trust you. I believe you. And God is there. <laughs>